And so the Bible has 66 books. Okay, I think everybody remembers that. How many of us, and without anyone telling me, but lift up your hands if you know how many books the Old Testament has. Okay. okay. How many know that how many books the New Testament has? Okay. That's 39 and 27. Okay. And now I'd like to get into the good stuff. Okay. I just want to, and I think it's so important that we understand our Bible because the Bible is our sole authority in life. It's the sole authority for the Christian. Amen? So I think we can never learn too much about God's word, about the Bible. And so I asked last week, how many of you know how many chapters the Bible has? And we'll go there today. I want to see how many know how many chapters there are. But then I want to know how many words there are as well. Amen? So I think it's nice to get to know the Bible a little bit better. Amen? Or isn't it? And I want to close with this today with the, with, on the Bible. But, uh, you know, when was the Bible divided into chapters? Does anyone here know that? And what century was the Bible divided into chapters? Okay, there's one person that does know that. That's interesting, because she went into the study, I think, because I said that we were going to teach on this, and that is good. I like that. You know, I like to study about the Bible, and I have a, one book there, and it's called The Glorious History of the English Bible. And I have it there in my office, and I love to study that book. I go to that book a lot, The Glorious History of the English Bible. You can learn so much from it. And if anybody wants to buy that book, I do have the information where you can order it there in my office. I'll just uh, remind me after the Bible study. But there I get a lot. So the Bible was divided into chapters in the 13th century, okay? Up till the 13th century, they didn't even have chapters. So the Bible was divided into chapters in the 13th century. Now, how many of us know here by whom it was put into chapters? You know? Okay? Okay. Can you answer that for me? It's Bible study. We do allow that here in Bible study. Okay, those are, they did write the Bible in the English language. Okay. Yep, they did. Okay, we'll get there. But the Bible was divided into chapters by Stephen Langton in the 13th century, into chapters. So, like I said, I like to learn about the Bible, but that wasn't the first Bible in the English language. There were a lot before that already, and we'll look at that in a little bit. But now I have a question. Was the Bible put into verses the same century than it was put into chapters? No? Okay. You know, just how much do we know about our Bible? I think it's interesting. Lots of times we Christians, we love God's word, but we know so little about it sometimes don't we? We know so little about it. I know I do. But because I fell in love with this book, I like to study on this book, what it's about. Amen? I love this book with all my heart. And I like to study on how, we became, how it came to us in the English language, and the Spanish language as well. I studied about the Spanish language way before I started studying about the English language because I was a pastor in a Spanish church so many years. So that was a big interest to me as well. Okay, no, the Bible was divided into chapters by Stephen Langton in the 13th century and then two verses in the 16th century. So there was no verses. Even though there was chapters, there was no verses until the 16th century. Interesting. 
You know, until they had the Bible, but they didn't have chapters until the 13th century, and they were, it wasn't put into verses until the 16th century. The first Bible to be printed in the modern chapter and verse format was Stephanus Latin Bible of uh, 1555. So that was the first one, but it wasn't even an English Bible. The first English Bible to incorporate these divisions was the Geneva English Bible of 1557. That was the first English Bible that had this format, chapters and verses. And that was the Geneva Bible of 1557. But we already had an English Bible before that. And that's where Tina said, Wycliffe Bible of 1380. That was the first English Bible. The first Bible translated into the English language. How many knew that? Amen. Amen. You know, and uh, it is uh, important for us Christians to know about God's Word. So 1380, Wycliffe Bible. And then in 1526, the Tyndale New Testament. And you know, the book I told you about, The Glorious History of the English Bible, you will read so much about our forefathers, how much they sacrificed for us to be able to have God's word in the English language. How many of them were burnt by the, on the stake? They were burnt, they were killed because they loved God and they wanted people to have God's word in their own language. They were willing to die for it. And Tyndale said, this short, miserable life, what is it if we can't live for God while we're here? And maybe not the exact words like that, but somewhere along that line. You know, it's a short life. Living for God should be a privilege for us, amen? You know? How many of us would call ourselves spiritual? It's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I think I'd probably have to think quite a while on that. Because if we're spiritual, then we're going to live the spiritual life. We're not going to miss a service. We were going to want to be where the Word of God is being taught or preached. And we're not going to lose time in speaking to people either. It's something that's going to come natural. Because we're spirit-filled. And what does the Spirit of God want to do? Now, if we don't want to do that and don't do that, what does that mean? Brother Roley actually reminded me of that. That means We are quenching the spirit because we all have the spirit. If we're not active, what are we doing? Wow, well, that, that, that was for free. I didn't even have that in my study. Amen. But you know, it's, uh, it's good to, and I just figured I wanted to have a short Bible study on this. You know, Tyndale New Testament, 1526. Uh, so that was, and we didn't have the Geneva Bible, the Geneva Bible yet, which had the, this format with the chapters and verses. That wasn't until 1557. And then the Coverdale Bible was written in 1535. And then the Matthews Bible, 1537. Great Bible, 1539. Geneva, Bi Geneva Bible, 1557. So all of those Bibles they had in the English language before 1557. But those Bibles did not have chapters or verses. So that's when the chapters and verses started. And then after the Geneva Bible, in 1568, the Bishop's Bible. 
The Bishop's Bible was not a very popular Bible. Only 20 some Bibles were written. And people hardly used that at all. They preferred the Geneva Bible because it was a lot more uh, dependable. So the Geneva Bible was actually used from 1557 mostly up till the King James Bible was written. And when was the King James Bible written? 1611. Amen. We did know that. Amen to that. Until 1611. That's when the King James Bible was written. Okay? Now I want to go to the chapters part. We already know that the King James Bible has 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. We've studied on that before. How many chapters does it have? 1,189 chapters. According to what I read. You read right. 1,189 chapters. See, somebody here did their homework. Amen? Because I mentioned it last week, and that's what it's about. You know, that we go and study, see what God's Word teaches on this. It's not just the pastor coming and tell you guys. If the pastor says, look, we're going to, I'll study it, and let's see if the pastor is going to know what he's talking about. Amen? Study it for yourselves. I think that's a good thing. Yes, the King James Bible has 1,000 189 chapters. How many verses does it have? Tina, let's see if there's anyone else here. <laughs> Brother Neil? 782,137. Okay, no, I'm verses. I'm verses. You're, you're ahead of me here. <laughs> now, don't give my answers away here, Brother Neil. <laughs> You're ahead of me there. Okay, how many verses does it have? Okay, it has 31,173 verses. 31,173 verses. She has good information. That is good. Amen? That's how many verses there are in the Bible. Had anybody ever thought about how many verses there was in the Bible before today? You know, and yet, we should, because it's God's word. Amen? How many verses is in there? So these are things, even in Mexico, when I was, um, it was a mission, you'd go out and you'd, you'd find people that didn't know anything about, the, most of them not even really religious, those people that start coming to church. You teach them about the Bible. That's the first thing you teach them. And I always tried to teach them that they would get to know the Bible very good. How many chapters? How many verses? Which is the middle verse of the Bible? Which is right the middle verse of the Bible? Uh, which is the shortest verse in the Bible? Which is the longest verse in the Bible? So a lot of things. It's important for us Christians to know these things. I really believe it is. So, and I know this isn't a mission. I know. Most of us here have been saved for a long time. But God just put it on my heart to study this today. Amen? So, let's go. Okay, 31,173 verses. How many ver words? Brother Neil already said that. And let, let, let's see if he's right. 682,137. Okay, I have a different number. So somewhere there, let's, now we're gonna, I'm going to have to study. Amen? See if I'm right. My number is 774,746 words. Okay? And this, actually, I've got out of a couple of books I looked up where that was. And I actually believe they are very good uh, uh, books so 
We'll have to, but I'll look into it. It's 774,746 words. How many letters? <laughs> you didn't think I'd ask that, did you? <laughs> I thought, I think everyone thought, man, what words that's going to end right there. Huh? How many letters? Now, I haven't counted them. Now, I'm depending upon information I got from books. And I think they're very trustworthy books. 3,566,480 letters. Let that run me by you again. 3,566,480 letters. Wow. So, we should be able to read it through in one year easily, shouldn't we? Easily. I think it is a very good idea to read through the Bible from front to back. And I'm not saying that you have to do it every year. I've said it here before. I've been saved. The Lord saved my soul the 15th day of April 2001. I've read through the Bible from front to back 22 times since I got saved. So and I haven't been saved 22, time, 22 years yet. So yes, you can read it through once a year, even though you're working full time. Because until I became pastor here, even being a missionary, I always had a full time job besides pastoring. Always. This is something new for me. Now I have so much time on my hand, I don't have enough time to prepare messages seems like sometimes. But it is a blessing to be able to read through it. So yes, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of verses and a lot of letters. Okay, which is the longest chapter in the Bible? Psalms 119, Psalms 119. amen. I was gonna say, if we don't know that, then something is wrong. Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. How many verses does it have? 176. 176. Amen. It's the longest chapter and it has 176 verses. Okay, which is the shortest chapter in the Bible? The shortest chapter. The shortest chapter, the longest is Psalm 119. Which is the shortest? Yeah, yeah no, no, I'm, I'm, I, I want the chapter. I want the chapter. You, you jumped ahead of me like Neil did before, Brother Barry. Oh, I want to be with No? Psalm? 117. 119 is the longest chapter. 117 is the shortest chapter. It has two verses. Okay? The longest has 176. The shortest has two. So they're both in Psalm. Psalm 117, Psalm 119, the longest. Psalm 117, the shortest. Okay? Now, which is the longest verse in the Bible? It's Bible study, so this has to do with the Bible, amen? Anybody have any idea which is the longest verse in the Bible? It's in the Old Testament. Esther 8, verse 9. Esther 8, verse 9. Somebody's looking on 9, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. Somebody's looking online here. But that's good too. Amen? Yes? 
it is the longest verse. Esther 8, 9 is the longest verse in the Bible. How many words does it have? See, I go right down to it. It's Esther 8, 9 is the longest verse, but how many words does it have? And I actually counted them quite a few times to make sure. It has 90 words. It's the longest verse on the Bible, and it has 90 words. See, all of this, and why, why, why do I like to study this? Because all of this helps us when we talk to people. And you know, Brother Rowley and me were talking on Monday. Uh, we went to visit them a little bit. And, and you know, how God uses us sometimes when we are speaking to people, how God brings verses to us that we really didn't even think about before we were there. God uses that. So when we study these things and questions come up, because there's so many questions that people ask us, then God can bring us these answers that we can tell people about them and be an example to them. Amen? I think it's so good. The more we know about the Bible, the more the Holy Spirit can use us. And he wants to use us. So 90 words, okay? Somebody up front here already said, told, me, told us who, which is the shortest verse in the Bible. Amen? <laughs> Brother Barry, and that's okay. Uh, he said what it says. It says Jesus wept. That's the shortest verse. Now, which verse is it? John 11, 35. Exactly. The shortest verse, John eleven thirty five. 35. Two words. Jesus wept. You know, it's a... Uh, when you think about that, you know, and I remember when uh, I got to know my wife, as most of you know, she's Spanish. I'm from the German Mennonite background. And our cultures are a lot different. And uh, she asked me, one of the first things she asked me after we started going out, she said, is it true that the Mennonites are happy when somebody dies uh, and, uh, and cry when somebody is born? I go, what? <laughs> She says, well, we, we've always believed because people tell us that the Mennonites, they actually cry when babies are born. And they are happy when somebody dies. No, that's not how we are. We're, we're humans, amen? We also cry when somebody dies. And Jesus wept. So I always tell people, there's some people that really hold back tears. Crying isn't a bad thing, is it? Jesus wept as well. Jesus wept as well. Okay? One more question. Which is the middle verse in Scripture? Psalm 118, what? Verse 18. No. You're close. You're close. No? It is Psalm 118. Verse 8. Verse 8. Psalm 118, verse 8. So very, very close. That is, and it says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's the middle verse of scripture. Amen? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And it is. 
It is better to trust in the Lord. Why? Because man will fail you every time. Amen? And the Lord won't. The Lord won't. That is it on Bible study. I just thought that was fast. Tina's going, really? Yes. And uh, about the Bible, we're not going to go further than this. This is what I'm going to end it with. I've been praying to ask the Lord uh, what to teach on next, so please pray for me as well that the Lord would show me. Uh, It's funny that Brother Roland, this evening, just as he got here, he asked me about one author, if I had any books on him. And actually, I started doing my devotions yesterday in one of his books. And as I was reading yesterday and today, I just felt that maybe God would want me to go through that book. And I think it would help our church so much I think it's so important. Uh, on Wednesday nights, we come here for Bible study and prayer meeting. And that we could really understand how, more, how important prayer is. Because that's what that book is about. It's about prayer. It's about spiritual life. And I need it. I need my life to be spiritual. I need to spend more time in prayer. And I think it could teach all of us how important it is that we spend time in prayer. I think it's not just the pastor that needs that. I think all of us need that. Uh, I've never really gone through a book in that way that I want to go through that book, but it is a very good book, and I think we would be blessed. Uh, buy it. So if it is the Lord's will, please pray for it, that the Lord would give me peace about it, that I could go through that book.